Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of XS Succeed. Uh, I've trapped another expert. Uh, I found uh, another person to explain uh, an Exceed character to a, uh, a newbie. The newbie is me. The expert is Taxi. The character is uh, Shovel Knight circa season two, promo night, as he's sometimes called. Um, Taxi, thank you so much for uh, being on XS Succeed with me. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. You somehow managed to pull me up from the depths of range eight. So. Yes. Oh, hang on. Wait, actually, hold on. Wait, in order to make this. <laughs> hold on. All right, there. Now that's better. Here's Ryu. There we go. There's Ryu. Yeah, here, here, here. There we go. All right, fine. All right. Now it's, now it's a taxi lesson. Everybody feels very comfortable here. Um, it's okay. And we'll do it really, really slow and methodical, too. And that'll be perfect. <laughs> All right. So um, a quick disclaimer. For everybody watching, before we get started, a couple things. One, uh, we're going to be talking about Exceed in a pretty play-to-win uh, mindset here. Um, this is going to be based on tournament play. You might note that we're talking about a Season 2 character, so you know, in order to, to leverage this, it might be a local tournament or it might be a, um, a legacy tournament or something, but the principles still apply. This is how you win with this character. Um, and it's... Not the only way you can play Exceed. Exceed can also be played just for fun. And if what you're describe if what we're describing in this guide does not sound fun to you, please play in the way that you do find fun. You'll play longer doing that. It'll get it'll get you better overall um, to play the way that you enjoy. Uh, and then the other part is that we're going to be talking about playing to win, but we're also going to be talking about playing to win from a particular kind of informed perspective, which is taxis. Uh, but that's only one perspective. Uh, you're going to hear us saying things like this is always correct or never do this or or this option is always better than this option. Take all those things with a grain of salt, please. Um, develop your own lines with this character. Uh, come tell me why we're wrong. Uh, I'm starved for content. Come hang out on my show for a while and we can record a, a, a follow up. You can you can trash talk all of Taxi's lines um, and we can go from there. We can turn this into a conversation. Uh, but yeah, so just just remember that that this is only one way to play this character. That said. Taxi, I I get the sense from having been around this community for a little while that promo night is uh synonymous with you at this point. Th this is this is one of the taxi characters. Uh I, I may have made a name for this character. As you can tell, promo night is very well loved by the community. Everyone thoroughly enjoys playing as and against promo night. Yep. No one has any uh bad things to say about <laughs> promo night or promo night players. It's all great all the time. So, um, so, so tell me about that. Why why is this what what is it about this character that makes him so um definitely beloved by everyone? Well, let let me put it this way. If you want to play to win, this is a pretty solid character to do so pretty easily. Okay. This is a character who, if you remember how, how strong Carmine is, this is a character who almost decked out Carmine. Wow. Okay. So, so this is a character who's so hard to kill that like, like we're talking about a tier of power that is, uh, that is yes. over, over what the, the game tends to, Tends to afford. Okay, and it, from when what you, what you're talking about about a good character to play to win, maybe not a great character to keep your friends with. If uh, if you're if you're really pushing on this character, I get the sense that he can be kind of frustrating. Unless your friends are all masochists, then uh, <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> all right, sick. Good to know. Good to know. And, but your but your enemies though, trick them into playing uh, promo night with you, and and maybe you'll enjoy yourself. Yeah. All right. Cool. The the biggest thing that held this character back for the longest time is that the character actively lies to you. So understanding how strong the character is means you have to understand that. When we look at the UA, it's after moving one or more spaces with a move action, you draw a card. And this okay. seems like it'd be really good, and it would promote a very mobile, active play style where you're kinda, bouncing kinda, around the arena trying to set hot, up range. Like high tempo, like you're, you're refunding your move, you're... Uh... You know, you're getting your mm -hmm. stuff and and compressing actions and all that stuff. Yeah, I would. This sounds rush downy to me. Yes, and you can play that way, and it's okay, but it's not the character's main strength. Okay. Usually, 
This draw card is a drawback and not a positive. Exceed is a game where when you want draw, you can get as much draw as you want. And for Shovel Knight, he really wants to draw out the game as long as humanly possible. Mm, okay. So burning through his deck slowly is really important, and you should not take a move action unless you really need to, because that extra card will come back to bite you in the late game. Oh, so so the, his character ability is like a detriment to this playstyle then? Yes. Interesting. Okay. And likewise for his Exceed, which is just two gauge, and you would think is really good as well, it gets you an additional move one. Mm-hmm. After you move with a move action and draw a card. Most high level Shovel Knight players will never exceed. Okay. Because it's just not worth the gauge investment. And we'll actually find that with our gauge, we don't really play our ultras most of the time either. Because we have better ways to spend it. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, so, so, so the thing you're saying about it, about it lying to you, we can kind of, for this line of play, at least we can sort of just turn off the character ability as a consideration in our minds, at least in terms of benefit, right? Yes. Like we might be worried about triggering it, uh, when we have to, but, but we're not looking this to ability it says as, as an try advantage. not to use the move action. Don't fall into the trap of wanting to keep range three. And then they step back and you step forward and they, Okay. Try and do this little dance with you because every time you're going to burn through your deck faster than theirs, which is a disadvantage for you because you want to draw out the game. Okay. Gotcha. All right. That makes sense. That That's completely counter to, I'll put it this way. It would be completely counter to my expectation of this character if I didn't already know you and the reputation of Taxi Meta, <laughs> because I do know you. This makes perfect sense. Uh, <laughs> uh, so th that kind of like, like slow grindy right. play style if you viewers remember at the beginning of the lesson when we made this joke that we were going to stand at range eight from each other th this is especially in the early days of exceed this is the kind of play that that the meta that taxi was a part of called taxi meta um kind of became known for is is this very very methodical um uh card advantage oriented mm -hmm. play style and it seems like this character is very good for that yeah Gotcha. As the game progresses, more options get discarded, which means you have more information, which means you can make better plays. Okay. Take your time, get all the information you need first, and then make your plays. And this is a character who really, really enables you to do that very well. Okay. So it, it like like th this is this is a broad theory of exceed as a whole that you're talking about and and that theory has kind of been you know inflected over time by by mm -hmm. mixing with other metas and all that stuff but this character specifically thrives under this kind of uh discipline for the game yes. so so brush up on your on your defenses brush up on your on your card game play when you're playing this character because that's how you're going to win with him that makes sense yes absolutely okay. cool all right um, so I know that with some other mentors, you've talked about twos and threes and exceed. Sure. Yeah. Um, the, the, the difference between, you know, a, a plus two power boost and a plus three power boost on, for example, like the, the Akuma guide that I did with D where we're talking about magic numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, the game is very much balanced around twos because those are the boosts on the normals. So they had to balance around them. Right, so we've what got... What makes Shovel Knight special... Oh, second, let me go just, ahead. Let me just, I'll just pull, pull a couple uh, boosts here. Hold on a second. Yeah, Fierce uh, Light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got... We got Bop. We got Bop. We got Bop. Yeah, so you've got your plus two speed, plus two power. Uh, really, these two. Um, mm -hmm. and, Even and this, this is four on purpose. For sure, yeah. And and so in terms of in terms of how these interact with other things, you're talking about, like, if we got a fast fireball, uh, that tends to hit about three damage. Putting two on top of that isn't going to break a five guard slow fireball. Um, It'll break spike, but yeah, yeah. Cool. Putting putting a um, uh, putting fierce onto assault won't break sweep. Like like the, these numbers are are pretty carefully chosen so that the break points don't get broken by just putting one boost down. Right. But, Putting one boost down gives you an advantage, but it doesn't actually change the math that much. Right. Um, 
Except for speed, kind of, but plus three speed breaks the game in more ways than plus two ever okay. could. Uh, the thing that makes Shovel Knight just so incredible, let me spread these out here, is he has consistent, solid access to threes at all times. So we've three, got three armor, plus three armor, three speed, oh. three power. Yeah, okay. And all of them. Oh, God. Plus three power, plus three speed, and plus three armor. Oh my god, okay. That's a lot of... Yeah, that's a lot of threes. Mm-hmm. Okay. We've got... Move three as well. And this, even though you're spending force, is technically up to plus four power. Sure. Which means you can hit that three breakpoint. Yep. Um, and and, after, and we'll get into this, I'm sure, but, but after you've seen the card... That you know, you can you can spend up to the breakpoint you need. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you don't waste any more resources than you than you absolutely want to. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. So this is half of what makes him so strong is because he has consistent access to plus threes that just break the game in half. It's really hard to beat him in an attack. Right. Especially once he sets up because. You can throw plus three on one of the worst cards in Exceed, and it's still a good card. Sure. Yeah, you, you, can, you, you can meaningfully change not just, like, how much you're paying out by hitting with power, but, like, you're, you're changing the interactions between the cards. Now that, yeah. now that Assault beats Sweep, for example, now that um, uh, now your uh, Spike is above Curve at three. Um, if you put plus three speed on Spike... It's safer than cross at range two, and it outspeeds everything at range three. Yeah. yeah because so cross can get that, hit by slow fireballs. Spike just stuns them. Right. So so the, even with like a hard read on them playing cross, like this just beats everything in the game. Yes. Uh, when you when you put crazy stuff on it. Or or most most exceed is a big game. Most things in the game. But on your uh, turn, if you have plus three speed, this beats everything in the game unless they specifically have a speed seven option at range two. Yep. And you're playing at range two. Yep. Or yeah, they, they've got like a they like, have a, stun like immunity? a like a crazy stun immune ultra or something where they're going to trade up on it. Yeah. But but barring really weird character specific interactions, when we're just talking about the normals, putting plus three of almost anything on a lot of the normals makes things pretty silly pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing that makes this character so strong is you can trade more efficiently than almost any other character in the game. Okay. Um, because Exceed is a game about trading. Normally, you're not going to stun someone outright. You're going to take damage and you're going to give damage back every strike. Yeah. There's some characters that play around trying not to do that, but as a general rule, you'll sweep into their sweep or focus into their focus. Sure, yeah, you'll you'll and and like like a win in exceed tends to be okay. Uh, you played sweep, I played assault. No boost in play. Uh, you won that strike, but you won by two damage. Right. It's, yes. it's it's very rare that short of like a reading play or some kind of or, or with a crazy boost in play or something that you can say, all right, I hit you for six. You hit me for nothing. That doesn't happen super mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. Most characters in Exceed, well, actually, every character in Exceed has 30 life, mm -hmm. except like Tinker. Yeah, Tinker, Taisei. Tai yeah, people like yeah. that. Um, technically, if they really want to. They could have 32. Sorry, 34. Right. Because you get two copies of this, and you reshuffle. Right. And usually this is the only armor you have in your whole deck. Right. Short of, short uh, other of like, than block. Like, yeah, fo like focus and block, right. So you, you, you have yeah. access to, to some stuff on the normals um, that you're hoping to, to pay for, but, but it, your, your life totals are, are fairly inviolable, right? Or inviolable, yeah. right? Like you can't so with focus... Much. That brings you up to like 40 life total. Sure. And that's if you play it every time, you never boost it, you always play for the armor, you always get full value off the armor. Right. And then blocks pretty variables that's hard to calculate. 
Right, totally. And then, and then, like, if we really want to get in the weeds, we can talk about EX attacks giving you armor. But I see your point, right? It's not. Yeah, you're not getting that much higher than the life total you have. So, shovel knight with flare wand. This is a consistent twelve armor every game, right here. That we're always going to be playing, pretty much without exception. As armor, always as a boost. It's not really an attack. Yeah. Okay, you can. And use the attack, but you need to be in a very specific situation to use sure. the attack. And when that is, is you really need a cross because you can't beat them, which is very rare because your boosts are incredible. Right. So, and so kind of what you're saying then is, is that Shovel Knight, by default, just with this boost, sort of low key has like 42 life just to start with. With this one, yes. Yeah. But then oh, no, we no, also no. have... I'm sure, I'm sure there's more, right. But all those, <laughs> other, all those other things that you were talking about, about like, may, may, maybe sometimes you want to yeah. play Focus as reading instead, you won't get that too. This is always three armor. Pretty uh, much. Okay, yeah. So already the tankiness begins. Yeah, so we're up to... Yeah. Questionable, up to 40. Right. This would put you up to 52. Right. Uh, this... Is a boost you're almost always going to use. This is one of the rare exceptions where this is how you want to draw your cards because you gain life too. Gotcha. Uh, and this is another 12 life per game. Yep. And you're always going to get full value from it because you just don't play this card if you're at full life. Right. 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 And you can't go above 30, but you won't be above yep. 30 when you play it. Okay. And this is the hand refill that you want to use because if you're boosting every turn, your hand stays neutral. And then when you only lose hand when you attack. Right. Because you don't draw at the end of the turn. Um, so this helps refill that hand, just top it back off. So that you can slowly burn through it again. Okay. And also give you more life. So now we're up to 64. Yep. And then this... Uh, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. Like you said 64 in kind of a casual way. That's, that's two characters. Right. That's yes. More, that's more than t that's more than twice as much life. Okay. <laughs> this so is another twelve. Yeah, because you'll always play it as, um, as the. Uh, oh, I mean the life gain on the on the ultra, but the also just the. Um, you the hardly ever again. play this yeah. ultra. Sure, the armor yeah. too. Maybe, maybe in a magical fantasy world, you gain five life off of one of these. Right. But typically, it's not worth holding on to. Um, just because it's. There's better ways to spend your gauge. Yeah, sure. Um, so this so that, is another 12 lives. So now we're up to 76. 76? Yeah, okay. And this is before we account for things like, damn, I have plus three speeds. They're probably not going to be able to hit me. You know, I avoid their sweep. Right, Or right. I break their sweep. So, like, you have a lot of effective life. Sure. And so uh, just just so I can I, I, again, I'm sure we'll talk about this when we talk about like yeah. economy and stuff. But as you're talking about this on a character who is deliberately drawing through things very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. So so this is the amount of life that is hiding in your deck, but you might not have consistent access to it because you are trying to marshal your resources so quickly. So you don't deck out and so you deck your opponent out. So. Is there a little bit of a caveat to this where this is the potential life, but you might not you might not see every card because you're playing kind of slowly? You might think so, but Exceed is a game with naturally really high card draw, even if you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. If right. we compare this to other card games like Magic or like Yu-Gi-Oh!, Pot of Greed says draw two cards and that card is broken. And that's busted, sure. And we can we can CC for for our whole hand if we want to and exceed we can prepare yeah and, and prepare is considered bad yeah no that's a good point it's a low tempo action yeah draw two cards is bad and exceed right okay. because it's not fast enough right that's very true um even though you're drawing slowly you have so many consistent access to so many boosts that you will usually have something useful and you draw a card to replace it right back. So you're right. almost always at seven cards in hand. Right. Or okay. six or five. Yeah. 
very rarely are you going to be a two or one card in hand. Right. And when you do, that's when you refill. Right. All right. That makes sense. And you get your life back. Yeah. And and undo the work that they that they've already done to you. So so mm-hmm. you are so I don't you don't need all of the armor all at once. Over yes. the course of a game, you'll get it. And if the game is going on long enough where you've reshuffled and you're actually, you know, you're seeing you're seeing And enough, it will. Yeah. If you're playing course. this character, it will. <laughs> right. You're you're seeing enough copies of these cards over the course of a very long game that you will have access to all of these things twice. So it's not actually a pipe dream that you could play this more than double your life's worth in armor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just even just getting up to 60 effective life. Yeah. We have that's, that's a lot. 12 life of flex room there. Yeah. And and I mean also like like characters do not have that level of consistent access to ignore armor effects either. Like no. you've got two spikes and maybe you have one or if you're like super crazy lucky two like uh, attacks or boosts that have ignore armor but that's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff to chew through and they're going to they're going to run out of options before before you run out of sources of armor yes okay that's a consistent theme with shovel light too is like uh, with tech right, right. tech is yeah. one of the best ways to get rid of boosts yeah damn sure. there's so many crazy boosts they could tech it's too bad i have way more of them than they have techs right and normally we see that kind of thing with like recursion or something like that, where where you know you get your options back, but it's you just have mm-hmm. such a density of them that they're going to be, they're going to run out of ammo before they run out of targets. Right. Gotcha. And our effective health is so high that we can almost trade two for one and still end out on top. Right. Yeah. So you just you just you know you uh, grasp into sweep over and over again and you're still like well this is slightly losing i'm not actually behind yeah yeah right okay and you focus into sweep and now you're winning right right yeah you you traded quote unquote evenly yeah but four damage to them is like eight damage that they have to do to you right sure yeah they have a a reasonable life total (laughs) <laughs> and, and you don't. Mm-hmm. Okay, I get you. So the the reason why we really want to slow that game down is we want to leverage our life pool. Right. And usually, in my experience, good players don't get to kill you before you deck out. Wow. If so, you're playing so, this so, character well. So, so your survivability is so high that even when you are playing so slowly and so methodically that, that you're more likely to burn yourself out than they'll kill you. Yes. Wow. Okay. And so they that, that, still have to keep up their tempo to survive because you just have, we're talking about life totals. You've got plus three power on a stick. You've got another plus three power on the stick. Right. You know? You've got power and movement that importantly doesn't trigger your UA. Sure. Yeah. You have another plus power on the stick. All right. So so it it's not like your only option is turtle. If you if you turtle and they let you turtle, then you just punch them for nine or something. And yeah. And they have counterintuitively to... with how much life you have, you're actually right. not turtling at all. Hmm. You're taking a bunch of hits and you're trading. But if you're not actively putting pressure on the opponent, you are going to deck out. Interesting. Okay. You need to kill them before you deck out. Because that's how you lose this deck out. If you have a numerical deck advantage, you are in a fantastic spot as this character. But normally that doesn't happen. Got it. Okay, so so it's less that it's less that this character um has a lot of options to to keep themselves from decking out and more that you need to you need to actively work against it Mm -hmm. uh to okay so so some of those some of those stereotypes about taxi meta about like the 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 cc zero and stuff like that those aren't um how do i put this those aren't born out of them being a good option in a vacuum they're born out of necessity because if you don't do that with this character you're going to kill yourself 
Kind of. With 60 the real main thought process is if my opponent discards cards faster than me, or before I do, mm -hmm. then I have more information to make decisions about what cards I want to keep. Right. Because if you drop all your sweeps, well, my spikes aren't nearly as important anymore, so I can get rid of those. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, the... the uh... The the CC zero is a is an extreme example, but I guess what I mean is just like mm -hmm. a lot of the 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 stereotypes about the the patient methodical play style is it, it's surprising to me that that this character like like you're playing that way to shore up a weakness in this character, not necessarily to play to its strength. You're not you're yes. not yeah. I I never knew that actually. It it never occurred to me that I thought that Shovel Knight was the kind of character who could draw cards forever. Um, but no, you play the way you do with him in order to keep yourself from dying. That's interesting. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Because if you play quickly, which you can, if you want to, but it's not as strong, it's not as proven. Yeah. You open yourself up to more variants, right? Yeah. Um, and with all these card draw effects, especially the propeller daggers are usually what bites you because you really want this life. But it makes you draw three cards. Right. And all the boosting means you go card neutral. So every time you boost and then they strike into you, they're going plus a card. And you have to go plus life to balance that out. Plus a card as in... Plus a card as in you've drawn one more than they have. Yes, their oh, timer okay. is one becomes one turn longer than your timer. So, so in every other in every other circumstance in Exceed, for the most part, like if if we're talking about a lot of other characters mm -hmm. or or a lot of other disciplines about this game, not drawing after a strike is a downside for you. Like I, it's like, oh man, if I boost, I get a card back; it refunds itself. With mm -hmm. uh, with striking, I don't. That's actually like. Because they're striking, they're not drawing a card. They are ticking you closer to their to your loss condition. Yes, that's backwards. I gotta okay. That's something that I gotta internalize because that's a very weird concept for for me and how I think about exceed. That's really and interesting, though. Normally, you take that anyways because striking into them means that they have a turn where they could strike you, and you don't have boost in play. Right. Right. So so you're you're gonna like it's a. It's like a necessary, it's like a, a fee you have to pay. Like, you have to do it, but you're not happy yes. about it. Got it. Mm -hmm. That's so you're, you're almost always going to end up with your timer ticking down faster than theirs. Right, because you're boosting on your turn, and they're striking on theirs mm -hmm. more often. Uh, and, and so your timer, or, or rather, it's not that your timer accelerates, it's that their timer uh, slows down. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So it's that balance of your timer is going to run down faster, right? So you do have to initiate. Well, not in it. You do have to press the situation. Right. But you don't necessarily want to initiate because that leaves you weak for a turn. But sometimes you need to. Right. Yeah. You, you know, because you, you have to. If, they could just never strike. Sure. And then you're boosting nothing. Sure. Sure. Because because you're daring, they're daring you to strike, and then they'll capitalize on their turn when you're weaker. Because I mean, mm -hmm. like we haven't actually gone through the kit the kit itself yet, but like I'm assuming in order for this character to even have a semblance of balance to them, that these attacks are not overwhelming without these boosts on top of them. Well, that's the fun part of this character is this play style is extremely unintended. Okay. Right. Um. <laughs> So, so as so, you can tell by the so, UA, yeah. So his card quality is actually not that bad. Yeah, and we can we can go through real quick. Um, let's start on this side over here. Sure. Yeah. Tell this me about is this. just this is another copy of Cross. It only retreats two, which is much worse. But usually, going from two to four is is enough. Your dodge, yeah. Sweep it dodges right? sweep still, yeah. right? And you're and you're above curve at two, which is kind of cool. You can you can play uh you know you can catch out your opponent's cross or something. 
Yeah. But its I, power is zero. Yeah. From, but that's from, a lie. From Yeah. From what I'm seeing, though, you really don't want to spend the force on this. Uh, yeah. You really want your force to go towards other things. And okay. actually, real quick, something we'll touch on. All of these beautiful plus three boosts. Right. You're going to see that they cost a force. Yeah, they, they all cost one. A force, one. a force. And then this is zero, but it's actually a boost in play. Right. Which means that you probably needed to... Uh, I mean, if it's one of these boosts, you already paid two Yeah. for that. And it's on an ultra, so that's more force. Although it's And these force, force this is what we're spending our gauge on. Because this lets us uh, double dip on our card economy. Okay, so so that's why we're not playing ultras either, that... that when we do hit with something or when something does go engage, well, hey, that's just force for later for us to spend on more boosts. Right. It's a card that you used, and now you get a force back that right. you can still spend. Right, okay. And so it, it's, le it's less about, in other situations with other characters, you know, if they're playing... If they're really heavily leaning into playing mix-ups, that's the kind of thing that you would do to keep options live in your hand. We're less concerned mm -hmm. about that, and we're more concerned about just, like, like stemming the tide of, of card flow. Yes, okay. we want to stem the card of, card of we want to stem the tide stem the tide of the tide flow. of card flow. That was a dumb thing I just said. Um, option preservation is definitely nice too. We definitely appreciate that because right. the stronger our deck is, the stronger our hand is that the opponent is aware of. Right. The more they have to consider before they can strike into us, the scarier all of our boosts are. No matter if we have anything good to use with them or not. Right. Um, but yeah, just slowing down that game, double dipping on your resources. Every card is precious because you are going to deck out. Right. So make the most of every card you can. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, this is this is cross. It's right. slightly faster, slightly weaker, and goes a little bit less far. Yep. But it's okay because. It's not actually that much weaker. We have so much consistent access to power. Right. And okay. It... So, so th there are times when you would play this as an attack, as you mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, that it would require a specific it's situation. It's rare. Right. It's rare. You'll either play it as a checkmate, or if you really need a cross, but you don't have one. Sure. And but you would generally prefer to play it as plus three armor. Yeah, plus three life is just incredible. Sure. Um, but it's it's solid, right? And so the, the the checkmates that you're talking about, you've put some power on top of it. They have a limited number of life, and and it's an above curve option. So I mean, yeah. you know, you just it, yeah, yeah, they they got five life left. You've got a plus three power boost in play. There's probably not much they can do about it, especially if many of their options are down and yours are still alive. Yep. Okay. It, yeah. So, so that, that's um, kind of how you're paying out on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have, we already talked about this boost. So we got mobile gear. And then this is kind of a weird card. So it advances four, two, three, four, but it only hits if you switch sides. So it's effectively range one to three. Okay. It's like a, um, a head stomp on Chun Li's kit. Yeah, kind of. Okay. If you, if you cross them up, it hits. Yes. Okay. This attack is kind of mediocre. It's kind of just a worse assault. Right. Oh, but is it's it, it, it's only it's, it's force efficient movement, though. It is. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And if, if we really don't want to take the move action, I might just reposition and it's fast, right? It's above curve. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it. I can get me where I need to go sometimes. Yep. OK. This boost is also probably the worst in this kit. Because um, you, don't want to sp you don't want to spend the money. Yeah, you don't want to spend the money. But it's still very useful. It's still absolutely something I play, because sometimes that plus one power means you go up in trading even more. Sure. You know, or, plus or... one power on sweep means all of a sudden, instead of six to six, it's seven to zero. Sure. And, and I mean... Uh, like, but but you would be looking for that on any other character. Again, I'm sorry to keep making these comparisons. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about like, all right, so this is this is access to enough power where now uh, assault can beat sweep. Excuse me. Um, I can get to four. I can. I, I mean, uh, 
you pump it enough, I mean, grasp can beat sweep, assault can beat focus, yep. stuff like that. But um, it and and you would you would happily spend that in order to win combat cleanly because that's such a powerful thing. Is is Shovel Knight so afraid of decking out that you want to put this boost on something? that doesn't need a lot of pumping in order to break a breakpoint, so you're spending less force. So would I prefer to put this boost onto sweep than onto uh, assault? Because it's naturally stronger so that I'm not having to put enough for more force down. Does that question make sense? You can, and it's going to depend a lot on if you're initiating or if you're responding. Because right. if you're initiating, absolutely. If you're responding, you want to leverage your speed as much as possible. Right. Sure. Sure. You, you because you if wanna... you can hit someone first and stun them, yeah, confirm your payout. Right. Even going four cards down to put seven damage on an opponent is so good. Okay. That. Th so it's not. It's not. I, I. I'm. I. I. I think what. I. What's happening to me is that like I've gone all the way through the looking glass, and I'm like, okay, don't spend force ever. Never. Never spend force. And now I'm trying to like come back a little bit and say. It, can you spend force if you're dealing seven damage on, you know, and getting none in return? I'm, I'm looking for the, kind of the, the limits of how uh, how much mm -hmm. of like a card miser I need to be with this character. And it sounds like that's about it. You 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 spend like you normally would to hit a break point. Yeah, every yeah. card is precious. Every right. card needs to get you your value. Right. But if it does get you your value, go get the value. Right. Spend it. Yeah. Got it. You do have ways to refill. You don't want to move around more than necessary and refill. Right. This UA, I'll use one to two times a game. Okay. You really don't want to use it too much more than that. Because if you do, that's when you start risking, I'm shortening my timer so much that I'm going to have to take more risks when I could have otherwise had a very safe, methodical win. Right. Okay. So that's so that's mobile gear, and it, and the before I interrupted you, interrupted you. You were mm -hmm. saying that dig tirelessly is not his strongest boost. I assume that you were you were leading into that means you can play this as an attack kind of more freely. Yes. Okay. Especially for movement that doesn't trigger your UA. Yep. It's really really good. Yep. Even if it doesn't hit. You can dodge slow fireballs with this. Sure, yeah. You can you can just go stand in a in a place that you I, mean, I like sometimes sometimes people dive in. Like I've I've played enough Zangiefs to to know that sometimes they're just moving in to move in because they want to be there. So you can Yep. Uh, sometimes you want you want to get out of the corner, right? Like there's there's lots of reasons to do movement anyway and when you're so uh guarding your force so carefully doing it for one instead like that's a that's a three force discount for moving that far. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good value. Uh, then we get Warhorn, and Warhorn is incredible. It's okay. probably your best attack in the entire kit. Okay. The boost is also really important. Darn. Um, I, was, I was hoping for an easy decision, Taxi. No. Never. Shovel Knight, every card is precious. You have a lot of decisions to make. Yep. Luckily, it's really hard to make a wrong decision because typically both sides are really good. Okay. Um, but this is a card that scales so incredibly well with all of your boosts. All right. So this is like your payout card. This is the the default to to pay out with. You have a single plus three power. This is now a five speed eight power. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot, and it's got three guard. So, so it, it um, can it, it, you know, if they're cornered, they can't cross out. They can't, uh, if you're, and if you're two, cornered, they can't, they can't grasp. grasp you out. Sure. Yeah. Um, gotcha. You get a plus three speed. It hits eight speed. Right. And it's also, and, and it acts it, like a cross. It's because it pushes two. two at range two. Right. Yeah. So you're still dodging that sweep. You're still, uh, dealing you know, in that use case, you're dealing five. They probably can't do much about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you get plus three armor. Cool. Now it's 
a faster sweep that pushes two, but does one less damage. But yep. it's okay because three of your guard is now armor. So yep. you're actually trading better. Yeah, you're trading up on sweep. Yeah, that's that's not a lot of cards do that. Uh, cool. All right. So 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 this is this is a um on its own. So so basically, what you're saying is don't play this without boosts on it because it's it's it on its own. It's an okay card. One two five five is an all right stat line. Mm. Uh, with any of your boosts, this thing becomes absolutely broken. Right. And, and um, specifically, any of your your big crazy plus three boosts like like the get digging even the plus twos seven speed five power that yep. pushes two yep or or seven is also enough to break uh sweep uh if you put fierce on it that's that's very true but i i guess i'm talking about like it, like get digging the plus one power isn't going to do as much for it you're looking for a bigger number yeah okay you need you need a two this card works very well with twos okay um get digging is important because it lets you move without taking your movement action. Right. And you get that plus one power. Right. And so then... And that our... plus one power is not a lot on its own, but, you know, you have two copies of Fierce in your deck. I'm sure we can figure out how to make three somehow. Sure, yeah. I mean, I've... I've uh, like, I got an English Lit degree, but I can I can do that math. So, <laughs> so, so you, you move away... Uh, your opponent does something, it's your next turn. You're not looking to cash out with this plus one power. You're looking to combine it with another boost to make something crazier. Yep. Okay. Is it is it typical for Shovel Knight to have two boosts down? Uh, or are you, are you uh, pumping it even further than that? I like to extend my advantages. Um... Win the strike and then throw as much power as you can into it. Okay. Because one but card for three but, power is a really good deal. Right. But first confirm your um confirm that you're winning. So put a speed boost down first. Like like make sure you're winning the strike first and then press. Or even armor. Armor's great at making sure you win a strike. Right. And then and then power is for winning more. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. So so you you get uh you get plus three speed on spike uh and now I've got other boosts in my hand. There's no need to cash out right now. They're not going to strike mm -hmm. into me. If they do, I'll play. If they do, I'll play the spike right. And I'm I do five, and that's cool. But if it's my turn again, I pump it even bigger. Now I'm doing eight on the spike or something. And it works really well with this macro game plan with Pepsi Meta's general idea of a macro game plan which is trade up in card quality trade up in card quality okay so so use your worse stuff to deal with their better stuff yes okay because if i can make my worst stuff better than their better stuff and they play it right right then there's only two things that can happen in theory yeah, you, either I mean, yeah, you you'll... beat all their worst stuff and they're dead because their worst stuff died horribly. Right. Or they use their better stuff and now you're left in a situation where you've got your good stuff and they're stuck with all their bad stuff. Sure. Yeah. Right. So 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 anything that like I mean uh putting putting these boosts onto cards that you don't have a super great use for anyway kind of gives you an, an additional numerical advantage yes okay that makes sense because your leftover deck quality is higher than theirs right okay i buy that so all right so so get digging is is just a uh a repositional boost power on top of it you'll put something else on top mm -hmm. of that to to make it unreasonable uh when you're cashing out are you initiating the strike i know that i know that you mentioned earlier the thing about um uh like don't make make sure that you don't uh strike into your opponent because then you won't have boosts on on their turn so how am i how am i pressuring my opponent if they are if they're hesitant to strike into me because of how crazy my boosts are a lot of lower level players will just strike into you anyway so 
and lowers. Yep. A lot of higher level players do a mix where they will strike into you to prevent you from stacking value when they feel like that's important. And right. they'll hold back to make you try and overextend or waste more resources when they feel like they can. Oh, so so they, they're holding an EX that means that they're actually confident that they're winning the strike and they're going to make you spend more and then, and then beat you anyway. No, they're going to make me spend more per life that I take from them. That's their goal. Oh, that's the value. Okay, so so if um, if uh, you put down plus three speed for that uh for that spike, um, mm -hmm. you're doing, you're doing five damage, for sure, doing five damage. But that's for two cards, and and the force you spent, and like 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 spike boost and yeah. the forces on the boost. So so that's that's five for three. You do the same thing with a power boost you're gambling now, but you have a better upside because you're doing eight for the same number of cards. That, that's kind of what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. So so they're going to uh, make you spend more for a similar payout by holding options that you need to pump things higher to beat with speed and things like that. Is that is and that their thought process is, if I make him spend more on this strike, he will have less to spend on another strike. Okay. And then I can take advantage. I gotcha. All right. So so, so at some point in, in a good player's mind, the strike against Shovel Knight is lost. And yes. you're, you're going to pay out. It's their job to make sure that you're not hitting them for like 13. And, yes. And instead, you're only paying out for seven or eight. And at that point in their mind, their their thought process is, okay, I have 20 cards in my deck. He's got 16 cards in his deck. Every turn we spend, my advantage gets stronger. Gotcha. He has to cash out at some point or he will deck out. Right. Interesting. What a, what a strange tension. Uh, that what, what, an, what an odd, like, <laughs> it, it, it's like, it's like you're like racing to go as slow as possible is is a very is a very backward concept to me i i i feel like my brain is stretching out trying to think he about has it. he has said such things as i would rather watch paint dry oh um, yeah yeah i can i can see it but again <laughs> like, like you got started with this lesson saying that this is for playing to win and maybe this yes. that that disclaimer at the start about hey sometimes we play for fun it, we need that now more than ever Listen, I might be slightly special because I love this character. I think this character is tons of fun. Totally, but also... Uh, my opponents, also, much less so. Yeah, they might not enjoy it as much, and that's okay. <laughs> All right, so again, play play this card, play this character against your enemies. Yes. All right, so, so tell me about Chaos Sphere, then. Okay. Chaos Sphere and Alchemy Coin together do something really important. So I'm going to kind of touch on them both at the same time in terms sure. of their attack shapes. Sure, sure. They're ranged. And I know this is really obvious because you could see one to five and you could see yep. this is a one to two that lets you spend force for extra range. Right. But what this means is your opponent can't get away from you. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they can't. They can't just zone you out for free and make you walk in. Yes. OK. You love these power and speed. You absolutely want them. But the threat of these cards is also really important because these cards say at range five i can play a power boost i can play fierce right i can play dig tirelessly right and and not because the opponent can't just wild swing and know i'm going to miss sure 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 to to um to diffuse your boost without using a tech or something like that mm-hmm Right. And so so you you might boost slash mercilessly once and then alchemy coin kind of needs to m remain as a threat for as long as you can hold it over their head. Yes. And you will yeah. absolutely have to boost it again or you might have to strike with it. Right. Same with chaos sphere and sharpen thy shovel because plus speed is incredible. Of course. But you need something to threaten range or else when your opponent steps out you are forced to walk back in and draw more cards. Right. We really don't want that. Right. So you would you would rather um spend the force with Chaos Sphere to reach them with the projectile than move in yourself. 
it depends on how much setup you have. It's really like, I would rather spend this force to make sure that all of my boosts get their full value. I see. Okay. So, so, and, and if I and, have plus six power down, which is not unreasonable with this character, right? So you, it's you, not. Yeah. Um, you would rather, uh, keep them from just being able to, to nope out by walking to range. Yes. You would want to cash out with this. Mm -hmm. And okay. for range, this card is not a bad stat line Four base power four speed. It's a Hadouken. It's a Hadouken that pushes or pulls. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just expensive because you don't want to spend spend cards. Right. Okay. But you will. You right. absolutely will. Don't spend it. If you just played Fierce, don't spend this. It's not worth it to get two more power. Right. Right. Think about how much damage per card you're doing. Right. Do but you if have, you've got do you plus have four a, or five power. Yeah. Do you have a metric uh, of like how much damage per card is good? Uh, you know, is it is it two? Like every time I put a card down, should I be hoping to get two damage out of it? Like, like what is my heuristic here? Is there one? Two is a really nice number. I would say never go lower than one. One damage per card. Um, yeah. Okay. If you think about it, an exceed deck is thirty cards times two. Yep. But it's actually slightly less than that because normally, if you deck out, you'll still have some cards left in hand. Sure, and like block doesn't deal damage and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I see where you're going. Um, but but more so, use sixty light or sixty cards to deal thirty damage. Yeah, right, right. So that's half per. You really want higher value though, because sometimes you're going to lose strikes, and that has to be okay. Of course, yeah, yeah. So I would say at least one, two is really nice if you can get two, and this character can reasonably hit two. Yeah. Okay, so so that that's kind of my sweet spot. And when evaluate, like if I if I go and watch a Shovel Knight game or play one myself and record it and then watch the footage back later, and I count the cards and say, okay, that was a strike where I won combat. You know, I traded up on my opponent, but I didn't hit my my value, my, my like my value projections for quarter two, like like the. <laughs> The TPS report is off or something. Um, that was a lost strike for me because I didn't get the value that I should have gotten out of the cards I spent on it. Is that is that a way to think about it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, gotcha. Okay. This is going to be a character where you're going to win a lot of strikes. More than winning strikes, the thing you're worried about is getting enough value out of the very few limited amount of cards you have. I got it. Okay. That's why. Part of why drawing is so bad as well is if you overdraw that seven card hand and you have to discard a card, that's zero damage for one card. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's not just the things that you're committing to the strike. So any sort of movement boost that you're playing, that's also zero damage per one card spent. Correct. That's okay. I get you. So, you know, I was thinking of it in terms of, all right, I have played this. I've spent this to put this card down and I'm going to hit with spike. And and as we said, that's three for five. But if I also had to spend the the movement action to get from range one to range two to play the spike, that's actually one more. Um, and then mm -hmm. I drew a card, so that's another one. So that's actually one for one in terms of my damage at that point. I, I've spent five, or I've drawn five or spent five cards. Five cards have changed, and yeah. I, I'm doing five damage. Okay. so That's part of why gauge is so valuable as well when you play your boost, is gauge's cards you've already, already played. Yeah. I can double dip. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. And Gage is essentially free force. Right. And and th this broadly seems like it applies to kind of every like, you know, different the math, the number the the uh uh the variables are different, but but yes. the like the equation is the same across lots of different exceed characters that like everybody should be looking to get value out of their cards. Um and and so maybe this this idea is kind of applicable across every exceed character to some extent or another, but but for promo night, it's it's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And we touched on taking this as well, where promo night's like two characters. He's got seventy two effective life. Right. 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 Uh, well, your opponent still has sixty cards, right? Yeah. 
So how much damage per card do they have to deal yeah. to kill 72 life? Yeah, so so they need to they need to more than double their their effectiveness. So that, so that's why they need to they need to apply this pressure. And they need to to kill you. But I'm sorry, no, 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 no. Rather, that's why they're not rather, going to kill you. Right, yeah, that's I'm sorry. <laughs> they, they, they need to make you kill yourself by decking out. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, because you absolutely can kill Shovel Knight, but it is so hard. Yeah. You need to get really good value, really good reads against really, really stacked stats and boosts. Yeah. I mean, like, and I, I've noticed that, like, if a... If like in end game scenarios, for example, when when I have a few life left and my opponent is trying to kill me, mm -hmm. you can make yourself very hard to kill and exceed and not get much else. Right. And not not get anywhere. But but yeah. if you're playing to not lose a game, you can extend things for a long time rather than yes. playing to win a game. Right. Uh, just trying to survive mm -hmm. it. So like it seems like you can you can leverage that over the whole game and really just make yourself, uh, as you said, you can kill Shovel Knight, but if I'm playing to not be killed, it's tough. And, and that's yeah. kind of, but by playing, and the him, thing is, is but by playing, playing to not, not be killed, killed I'm going to death myself Shovel Knight out. is also, yeah. Yeah. There's a balance to, where you don't want to die, but you also want to keep applying enough pressure to kill them. Yeah. Interesting. All right. And so take, all the time you need to do that. Just realize you do have a finite amount of time. But right. use that time. That time is your advantage. Right. So I, I after we after we finish up with the with the boost, we should talk a little bit about how he's applying that pressure and how he's getting his payouts. I know we, we already talked about uh, Chaos Sphere as one and Warhorn as the other. But <laughs> it is is a lot of the stuff that he's doing um pay, like like setting up with these crazy boosts and paying out with normals. That's definitely a big part of it, yeah. Okay. Like paying out with sweeps. Sweep is insane value. Sure. Um, as the game progresses, holes are naturally going to open up, right? Yep. Yep, you definitely. have so many tools to take advantage of those holes. All their fast stuff drops, so you don't really need speed anymore. Well, that's okay. I have tons of power. Yeah, and so and now I can play. Uh, uh, now I can play Chaos Fear as an attack more because I don't need the speed. Yeah. All their right. slow stuff drops, so you need to be able to guard through it. That's okay. I yep. have armor. Yep. You know? They've got mid-speeds left that you really need to play around. Well, guess what? I have speed, too. Have speed, sure. Yeah, okay. So so you're you're um, you're um, changing your priority. Again, this is this is exceed yes. stuff. This is not Shovel Knight stuff. You're changing your priorities of your attacks and boost based on what's still live. But Card your... quality massively fluctuates as the game progresses. For sure, yeah. And, and you know, their ultras become online at some point. You got to contend with them. Like, like the game state mm -hmm. changes rapidly. Uh, but the difference with Shovel Knight is that he has this, this additional uh, tension of, you're never going to kill me, but I might kill me. That he has to yeah. contend with. Right. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so so that's that's uh, Alchemy Coin and Chaos Sphere. The boosts on them we've already talked about as being importantly for Alchemy Coin. This is another hand reload. Oh sure, yeah, and and, and if you're playing at range, this is a, this can be a full reload. Yes. Okay, and there are times this when, is when you part of that. why you don't want to activate this too as well is you already have so many hand reloads right that you don't want to risk situations where you're going to be discarding cards. Right. And I should be using those hand reloads to actually reload my hand. Just not, not doing it frivolously, not doing it uh, uh, when I don't need to. Every card you discard is another card you have to make up that power value for. Right. I get you. All right. And so then so we've let's got... let's go to the ultras. Yeah, we've got Propeller Dagger and, and Trapple Chalice. I'll, also, I just want to... Uh, quick, uh, quick aside, I love the Shovel Knight art. It's so nice. Yeah, it looks so nice. It's such a good, uh, good design. I so, I actually like the promo art a lot more than than the season four art. Hmm. I like I like the uh, and this is we're we're getting a little off track here. I like the um the card frame a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 Me too. it's very easy to it's very easy to read. It's very legible. All right, so propeller dagger. This is the ultra you'll play sometimes. Okay. Sometimes you just have too much gauge. Um, as crazy as that sounds. So, so 
one gauge, but really up to three gauge, it looks like. So I'm spending one gauge yes. to play the attack, another gauge to recur it in case I want to do it again, and mm. then a third gauge to move afterward. These are both very situational. The hit effect is good because it doesn't actually cost you anything. Uh, Which is counterintuitive. Oh, oh, because is it uh, you're spending one force and you're getting an ultra back, and that's in you're your hand. You're spending it's, it's two. a card that you've already gotten your full value on, right? To get another brand new, fresh, shiny card in your hand, right? That you could play again, right? Yeah, and because okay. we don't really care about gauge's gauge most of the time, we care about gauge's force, right? This is a force for a force. Yeah. And 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 because it's an ultra, you can spend it as two, and and that that sort of gives you that value that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's solid with just this alone. This is two power. Yep. Per card, because it's the one gauge, but gauge yep. is kind of free. Yep. So really, read as gauge is less than a card because it's a card you already spent. Right. So it's at least two power per card. Yep. So so that, that's um, that's good value on its own. You can also you know, uh, use it to reposition at a discounted rate. Spend one gauge to move mm -hmm. three. Don't even have to hit for that. So yep. okay. So that, so utility ultra basically. Yes. Um, lots of lots of little things. It's not like an overwhelming advantage or anything. Yeah. Okay. And we talked about the boost as well. It's it's a hand reload that just extends your life advantage. Right. Um, and and so, so, chalice. so 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 most oh. of the time I'm going to be playing this as a boost, but that drawing three cards I actually sort of I need to time it in order to yes. to get the most out of it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so sometimes the ultra will be valuable. You need that six speed whatever. It also scales insanely with your boosts. Plus three power and this thing breaks sweep at speed six. Sure. Yeah, set, sets a position that you want to set up your next thing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's a lot of stuff. Importantly with for chivalry and something we haven't talked about that much, these boosts are all incredible. Yeah. All of them. We love them a lot. So, so the you don't the, really want to discard one of those boosts. Yeah, discard one of your continuous boosts from play. Uh, if we go back to our math thing, you know this is every boost that we put down is is two force that we're spending towards uh, this draw three, which we don't want, and gain gain life, which we do. Yeah, luckily we have all of these other cards in our deck. Um. That don't cost force. And my favorite one to use is Spike, because this boost is kind of mediocre. Sure. But it happens to synergize decently well with a lot of his kit. You throw power on and you throw on defend, and all of a sudden that's really good. Right. And you and you frequently will be playing at a pace where you can have two boosts in play. Because okay. your opponent is afraid to strike into you. Yeah. Even okay. if you play this first, a lot of your attacks happen to synergize with it really well. Like Warhorn. Sure. Or Chaos Sphere. Alchemy Coin becomes God himself can't break this yeah, card. Yeah, you, you cannot break the card. You are getting your value out of this card come hell or high water. Yeah. Even Mobile Gear. Mobile Gear becomes incredibly solid with this card. Sure. Um, so but, it's not like I don't have situations I would play this in, but right. then I can cash it out and say... Yeah, frequently... Oh, the this is your this is your payment for fur chivalry. Yeah. Because you're looking for the And these least... plus two my yeah. fierces. My lights that I happen to not need. Right. As as weird as that sounds to not need a light. I know, right? Like that this is some of the best boosts in the, the like this is some of the best boosts in the game that we're saying, like, eh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh um, dig tirelessly. Sure. sure it's a sure. great target for this. Yep. So so but ideally I, I don't play this like like this is another fee, right? Ideally, I don't yes. play this at all because I don't need the life gain. I don't need the card drop, but I will. Well, the life gain is how we get to that 72 life. Right. 
So this is this is like a preferred way to reload your hand because sure. you're also getting life. Sure. And so, every so, life you gain means the opponent has to spend more to kill you. Sure. So so just as a as a point of comparison though, I would never or I'd be very very careful to spend this boost uh on spent gaining three life because armor kind of is life yeah this is three life this is three life so the only thing you're doing is drawing cards and we don't really need we, to we, do don't, we don't want that right okay so so cash out in some yeah. different way all right usually you want to spend get digging uh get digging because you've already got the movement out of it yep the, the plus awesome one power, power is not that important it's not that big a deal sure dig tirelessly because this has a lot of extra costs associated with it yep and and you don't super need it because you do have yeah. access to um slash mercilessly or another normal boost yep any of it, them even like as crazy defend, as that is but any of them yeah. really okay uh trouble chalice has a very similar theme so the ultra is pretty solid the main problem with the ultra is it just isn't enough power it's not enough value out of it yeah it yeah. is three gauge which is really hard to get to when you really actively want to spend your gauge on force yeah you're, you're and then you're not uh it, it sounds like gauge is going to come in and out of your cards are going to come in out and, and out of your gauge pretty regularly you're not really saving up yeah Okay. Your hit effect draws you a couple of cards, which is cool, and you can gain life, but you have to spend one force per life you gain. Right. And you don't get anything else. Right. So and, this and... is a card that maybe sometimes it beats everything your opponent has, and then you play it. Right. But, but... otherwise, it is justice in spades. Yeah, and, and this is ridiculous. Um... Yeah. And and similar to for shovelry, the the discard one of your continuous boosts. Uh, mm -hmm. Similar valuation judgments, or is this so, is this so powerful that you would be comfortable sp uh, spending one of your stronger boosts if you had? It to? depends on the situation. Obviously, okay. I want to get the most out of all of my cards. Of course, right? yeah. So I really do want to use it on get digging or dig tirelessly, right? Or one of my normal boosts. But I absolutely will play it instead of one of the plus threes if I need to. Right. The and really important thing to watch for this card specifically. Right. Is tech. Sure, sure. That's a lot. Um, you know, because not only is it an ultra, it's the force that you already spent putting this in play as well. Or or mm -hmm. something else. Yeah. So you, you really don't want that to go away. Something when we're playing Shovel Knight is you can almost pretend like the opponent doesn't have dives because your boosts are so good that if they're not teching you, like that's right. hilarious. Right, sure. If they jazz hands you at the start of the game, you laugh. And you win, right? Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, for for reference, for, for people who don't know, jazz hands is colloquial for um EX dive. Uh so playing both yeah. copies of dive, you run yourself out of tech. Uh it's specifically on, EX dive on turn one. On turn one, that's right. Yeah. Um yeah, um, so they they are not likely to do that. Um, and if they do, you totally just you eat that. Oh, it's yeah. just already yeah. you just handed me the win. Yeah, you you dealt six damage to lose the game. That sounds good. So, um, I th this this goes back to something that you were talking about earlier about trading up on card quality. Justice and Spades. I can't actually think of that many cards that need plus three power and plus three speed and plus three armor like that's a lot but so so am i am i looking to like at the very least if i if i have plus three speed and plus three power i am unlikely to not be stunning my opponent so i probably i might not need the plus three armor is am well, i let's am look I, at sweep right i'm plus three power i break pretty much everything in the game yeah I'm plus three speed. I now hit speed five. I now outspeed assault on offense or dive. Yep. Or spike on yep. defense. The, 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 the many of the things, you know, dive and spike, especially the things that they would play into my sweep if they if they read it correctly. I have armor. I now trade even hilariously better against any fast options. Right. They insult right. me. They're trading one for nine. One for nine. Sure. OK, so so. Uh, if I'm if I'm trying to pump up a mid speed that wins by not trading, this is less 
less valuable, but you, you put it on a counter attack or something, suddenly it becomes pretty unreasonable. Mm hmm. Okay. And is, is and it's so fine on the mid speed? Like, really, when you at the end of the day, who doesn't want an eight power six speed spike? Yeah, that seems that fine. just so happens to like have the niche utility of not getting stunned by cross in the corner, actually, sure. just not taking any damage against it at all. Sure. Um, <laughs> but but it's uh, it's I, I, I'm not I'm not getting the full value out of that plus three armor, but I just hit for for eight at speed six, and you know, that's like sometimes we're allowed to have nice things yes. okay mm -hmm. i get you so so it, it's a little bit less of a of a niche than i i think it is but in general am i paying out with kind of these kind kinds of cards things that that benefit the most from this like this kind of value like i want to put it oh, on yeah. sweep or something yeah yeah okay yeah. i gotcha and like um, to, to be honest it's really hard to have any card in the game be bad after you put this boost on it. Right. But you're looking for more than just not bad. Grasp, I typically wouldn't put it on. Right. Because just, it doesn't hit at least seven power, but just, honestly, like... Yeah, pretty much every other normal except Cross does. Five is incredible with this. Yeah. You're, you're typically playing for two of these three numbers. Right. If you can make use of two of these numbers, you're good. If right. you can only make use of one of these numbers, I don't know what card you are, but then it's not worth it. Right. And and in that case, just play one of these. I guess Grasp. Grasp only makes use of power. Right. Maybe armor. Right. Uh, I, I guess, so the other, the other question is, how much utility does this have in a boost war? Uh, would you play this card when you're in neutral to get an advantage, or are you using it to shore up against your opponent who already has an advantage, or is that too risky? No, absolutely. I play... I play this, I move in. If they try and boost against me, oh, absolutely, this is going down. Okay. Unless they still have both dives up. Right, right, okay. So, so um, in, in those situations, then the math about what you're going to pay out with is going to change. You know, if they have a speed boost, you need to, to skew a little bit higher in, in speed order to avoid uh, yes. being spiked when you're sweeping or something. Like, like you, you, mm -hmm. you do need to make those considerations. But in neutral, put it on something that would just benefit from two of them. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And it also draws you a card. Whether that's a good thing or not. Mm -hmm. So is 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 this the most stats printed on an individual boost? It's got to be close, right? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it, it's it's got to be either that. Maybe or, Akuma's or, like double your power one is. Yeah, it depends on how you count that, or maybe like like some of Tinker's crazy stuff. But yeah, there's I have I don't think I've ever seen nine stats on a boost before. That's pretty wild. Um, Way of the Warrior is considered an insane ultra boost, and that is plus two, plus two. Yeah. Um, Way of the Warrior is like what armor? I mean, and, and you know, Way of the Warrior is on Ryu and Ken. It's on Ken and, and Ryu. And, and, right? and, and True Master yeah. on Ken, yeah. Which is like their card quality is already bonkers. So we're not, we're not quite comparing uh, apples to apples, looks at the Trowpole as an apple joke. Um, but at the very least, like like on any kit, plus three, plus three, plus three is ludicrous. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. So, all right. So, so that's that's kind of the that's the kit, the game plan. You sort of talked about the philosophy. Any like any like particular combos that I should be looking for? Any sort of like mulligan tips or anything like that that you you want to get into about how to actually turn this this kit into your game plan? You are an insanely flexible character. Okay. Don't forget that. Your game plan is still, like, boost and hit them. But, like, you have so much access to everything you could ever want. <laughs> right. So just, just use it based on the matchup. Use it how you need it, when you need it. Absolutely. Okay. Play with your hand. Mulligans are obviously somewhat important. Usually you want at least one of these cards in your mulligan, if you can. Both because the boosts are really good, 
and also because just threatening that range is really good. Right. An important thing with uh, Mulligan as well, these ultras are much more useful later in the game. Mulligan them away. Okay. So, and, and that's, that's because, like, one of them's a reload, which makes sense. You, you don't want to play this when you have 30 life and a full hand of cards. But this one, is it just because you, um, uh, you're waiting for some of your opponent's options to go down? It's so absolutely tax. Oh, sure, tax, of course, duh. Um, so when those yeah. when those go away, those will come back. Uh, is this also just like like the obvious parry bait for your opponent? It can be, yeah. Okay. And I likewise, guess. you want to parry their techs. Okay, sure. It doesn't really matter what their scary card is; you can handle it. But but you mm -hmm. can't handle them disrupting your boost game. And strangely enough, you're kind of okay with them parrying this because it's not a block that they can use later. It's. It's one card to get rid of their block if they parry this. Right. And normally, it takes a lot more cards to damage your block. Oh, yeah, right? that's true. Okay. So, so they're, they're, uh, they would be spending that block on a nine damage payout or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, you... and they would still have to discard cards for force. Sure. And, and you in... but, but you're trying to kill them. You're not trying to deck them out. Exactly. Right. So so their their life is probably more valuable than their deck is. Yours, yes. Your deck is more valuable than, than your life is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. So if they parry this, it's sad, but you're kind of okay with it. Right. If they parry this and miss, then you're like hilariously okay with this. Yeah, you're super fine with that. They're not going to block you later on. Um, and the the trick is is that you're gonna think like oh like reading bait it's gonna suck not really you know unless you have attacks that actually don't hit when you've got your boost down how are they gonna beat you sure yeah you you can at least and and if you're because if you're trading evenly you're probably not really trading evenly because you have armor and you've got yeah uh, you you've got so much access to more life that trading evenly is how they die. Right. Tell me how you're going to beat my five speed, nine power, three armor, six guard sweep. Yeah. Please yeah. be my guest. Reading, re reading it if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they found a way to put to have uh, three copies of the same card, and they ex it twice at the same time. It's a double ex, <laughs> double ex spike <laughs> to beat your boosted sweep. That's how it's got to be. Mm -hmm. All right. So I see your point though that that uh, you are just as vulnerable to reading as you are to any other strike when uh, you don't have your boosts up. When yeah, you when can you... pick that I play Assault. My Assault is still, you know, speed 8. Sure. Go for yeah. it, champ. Yeah, and, and <laughs> if you don't have this boost up, well, you were vulnerable anyway, right? If they're striking when you don't have boosts up, something has already kind of gone wrong, or, or you've already cashed out and they're trying to, to get back in the game. The reading is, yes. not, is not... That's not worse. You're you're already scared of of the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Typically, um, it's the grasp and the spikes that you have to be worried about them reading because they can miss. Sure, they can whiff totally. But typically, um, if you draw spike, you're going to want to boost it pretty quickly, and if you draw grasp, you're going to be boosting it in the near future. Right. So. Right. Okay. Um. So it is. We've talked a little bit about counterplay already. We, we've sort of talked about mm -hmm. the, the mindset your opponent needs to be in. Um, do how do your play pattern? Because like, it sounds like what you're sort of describing is like ideal, ideal situation uh, for promo night. When you're playing a really good opponent, do you need to make different decisions or or value your cards differently? Is there any like counter counterplay that you need to do to to disrupt their disruption? Or are you just playing your game plan better than they're playing their game plan, and that's how you win? Double Knights really... I, I know there's a lot of decisions to make, but they're very like linear with how they play. Mm -hmm. You can be more aggressive. That's a different play style. Yeah. It's not as proven. It's not as successful for if you're wanting to play to win. Right. Um, but it's really hard to disrupt this character. It yeah. really is. The yeah. best players, the way they disrupt this character is they make you waste cards. Right. And you just have to play really tight and not waste cards, and they will absolutely present mix-ups. 
you will absolutely have to call some things, right? Yeah. You have to be very careful about your sequence ordering, right? If you play power first, they can strike into you. Right. They and can, maybe avoid you with a fast thing. They can be if you play speed first, they can strike into you and make you not get as much value per card because right. you didn't boost with power. Right. And and then, you know, they, they struck with uh they struck with assault, now they have advantage. Um mm -hmm. now they're striking into you with no boost in play on on their turn and and you're very sad. Anytime they can block you or make you miss is potentially a huge right uh like loss for you in terms of power per card that right. you have to make up okay so i mean going back to that reading thing the 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 reason that that reading grasp is is so dangerous is not necessarily because grasp would lose combat because it whiffs it's because you've got three boosts behind it and all yeah. that all that effort that you just put into it is gone even if they hit me with absolutely nothing sure even if they wild swing and completely miss yeah. they just made me spend four cards to get no damage yeah totally which is which, which is way below our target of one to two per card, and yeah, and honestly, like that's about how much you would expect reading to hit you for if you were caring about life, right? Like when when we tend mm -hmm. to, uh, when when combat when you lose combat cleanly to a reading, it's it tends to be for like you know five or six damage or something, right? Um, so that that's actually kind of in line with the projections, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And they can hit you too, and that's fine. And you'll make that life back up, like right. I said. Right. Even against incredibly strong characters, it is so hard to kill this character before they either deck out or almost deck out. Right. Or or kill the opponent. Yeah. They they have they have Chevron either wins or decks out, generally, or or comes very close. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When I fought Carmine, this is not a character. That takes a long time to kill people. You're right. Um, I lost with four cards left in my deck. Yeah. Yeah. So even even then, it was and a, a half empty hand. It, it was a a close bet between can Carmine kill you or can yes. can you deck out? Even then, it was like, oh well, that that one's going to have to go to the judges. That was a pretty close race. <laughs> And it, like winning was still on the table, and I only didn't die to deck out because I took a risk to try and win. Yeah, and I mean, like, like we're talking about a situation that would require a, a pretty difficult to replicate um, uh, set of circumstances. This is a character that has rotated out, and Carmine is banned. Uh, but the fact that Carmine yes. is banned and still could not, still had a lot of trouble killing Promo Knight, is it speaks to speaks to what you're talking about. That your real enemy here is your own deck. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Your opponent can influence it. Absolutely. And should, if they're good. But your biggest enemy is yourself. Sure. All right. So, and, 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 but at the same time, like, as you said, the decisions are frequently kind of linear. It's not that difficult to get good results out of his character. Sometimes when you say your, your biggest enemy is yourself, it's because you are, um, you're playing a very technical or difficult to play character and you'll make mistakes with them. This is more just like your biggest enemy has to be yourself because it's not your opponent because they're not going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. At, okay. the, at the very top end, when you're fighting really good people, these yeah. decisions become a lot more impactful. Sure. They, they matter for sure because that's how they're going to win. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Because almost anything you play is good. And that's part of why I say this character is so easy to pick up and part of why I recommend this character to new players mm. uh despite all the complaining that everyone who has to play with those new players yep. uh tells me yep um <laughs> i remember during the mentor event last year you tried to sell me on this character and it was only because uh the event was seasons three to six that i i backed off of him um <laughs> so so definitely uh uh taxi out here uh ruining other new players exceed games by recommending me play promo uh, uh promo night yeah you can direct i don't know your, your, i don't know can... if fakey still plays i think fakey still plays some i know he uh... Uh, uh at the time i sent fakey's partner home with my promo night deck i sold it to them <laughs> and i think they still hold a grudge against me you're 
you're waging a campaign of terror on the Exceed community, Taxi. <laughs> How could you? Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so if anyone is interested in in uh, uh, creating a reputation for themselves, similar to to what Taxi has in uh, in the Exceed community, which I think is probably like fear and respect at this point. Um, I don't uh, know. I'm kind of old guard. Yeah. Okay. So, so maybe, maybe this is like a Batman Beyond situation where, like, some the the new generation is going to pick up the mantle of of promo night and really just mess with some some of the the newer players. Um, okay. So we've we've talked about the kit. We've talked a little about counterplay. We've talked about the game plan. Any other like like broad? Um, you know, we've talked some about like economic concerns and stuff like that. It seems like a lot of those mm-hmm. decisions are pretty easy. Any other broad decisions or or points to make about? promo night that you want to mention don't exceed yep please don't exceed. D- despite the please co- d- despite the cool uh the cool gold armor he gets yeah yeah um yeah a lot he's very easy to pick up and do well with to do really well with takes a lot more knowledge and micro decisions yep but that's okay that's still something you can easily get to, and you're still going to have a fun time. Playing. Right. Your opponent, not Maybe as much. Not. Right. But you will. Right. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess the, the last thing I want to ask before we wrap this up, yeah. then, Taxi, is uh, let's say that uh, this lesson has not sold somebody on a... Uh, uh, on playing promo night, but you know that, that they play a certain character. Um, that plays similarly to promo night and that means that they should check it out who what what characters are like promo night that if you saw somebody playing them you would go oh you know what give give promo night a try he plays kind of the same um that's really really hard um yeah it depends on if you like promo night because you want big number or if you like promo night because you like watching your opponent slowly go insane so I'll kind of cover both of those. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, if you like watching your opponent slowly go insane, Joffrey is fantastic. Okay. Um, so is Renea. Yep. Yeah, if you like big number, uh, Remelis has big number. Season three, just the way it functions, I don't know if there's really anyone that similar. Um, yeah, I, mean, I guess, I guess, like, like big boost game and stuff. In terms of economics, Akuma's probably the most similar. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna think, thinking about him or maybe Ryu, just in terms of how how crazy their boost quality tends to be. Do you like, not- do you like Akuma potentially accidentally giving damage to your opponent? What if you could just get plus three power for free and not have to give damage to your opponent? <laughs> 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 try promo night. Try promo night today. What if Akuma crits and you're like, "That's great." Now I have plus twelve power, and your opponent says, "What?" What? And then you proceed to kill them. Play shovel knight. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, and then further, further into, further into season four, um, they're a bunch of weirdos. Uh, anybody, anybody particularly like shovel knight? Anywhere here. Spectre Knight also has a tight economy, but the main problem with Spectre Knight is that his economy doesn't really get him much. So mm. not really. Okay. Um if you like boosting, maybe if you like King Knight, you'll like Promo Knight. He's I, more I guess, straightforward. I guess maybe like um, the, the if the you extreme, like never dying. Yeah, the extreme tankiness, the, the treasure knight thing, uh yeah. might be might be valuable. Mm-hmm. Um okay. Yeah, fight also has a tight economy. Um, Beheaded's kind of got power progression, I guess. Right. Uh, at the time when season four came out, Plague Knight was really, really strong. And part of the reason why we discovered Promo Knight was so strong was I had told D in playtesting, I'm like, I don't think Plague Knight's that strong. I could beat him with my Promo Knight any day. D looked at me like I was insane. Right. And uh, and this was happened. Born. Yeah. <laughs> um okay ragnar can kind of grind out games life gain sure if, if you like 
trading characters. Ragnar's yep. similar. And I know I'm kind of approaching this with the backwards perspective of if you like Promonite, here's some other characters yeah, that are no, similar. I, I think but, that works. Yeah. Th that, that's, uh, the other, th that's the other thing, right? Like maybe somebody's a, a lapsed exceed player who really loved Promonite and hasn't gotten back in the game for a while and want to see what's out there. Who do they yeah. like, right? Like it, it's the same question. Um, if you're tired of decking out, you know, Hawkman is right there, as right. is Minato. Sure. Uh, <laughs> you're like, man, the last three times I died was due to deck out. Play Hawkman. You won't die I, to deck out. I never want to, I never want to, uh, uh, have deck to, out again. yeah, have to think about my, my deck pressure. Actually, just again. play any other Exceed character. You probably won't deck you out. Pro you probably just die first. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I guess Tager has big stat boosts, and Arcune, you get to watch your opponent go insane because it's mostly because they can't figure out what's going on, and not as much because they know exactly yep. what's going on and they yep. can't do anything about it. Super looking forward to that lesson uh, when when I get to that uh, for Arcune. By the way, I would love to know what he's doing. Uh, season six, I guess Phonon, although it pains me a lot to recommend season six at all. Uh, I know, yeah. Carmine, I guess maybe. Yep. I mean, if you're playing in a tournament where where promo night is legal, maybe Carmine will be legal too. Yeah. I don't know. Carmine's pretty good. Yeah, Carmine seems pretty good. Yeah, there's a few characters that like maybe go even against Carmine, and promo night is one of them. Okay. Um, Hammy is another weird one, but yeah. that's that's yeah. another story for another day. Um, season seven is much more high tempo, so it's really hard to imagine just because cancels are all over the place. Sure. And yeah, likewise, yeah. if Promo Knight was made legal again, he would probably have the hardest time against season seven. Right. Yeah. Um, just just being able to being able to overwhelm him on on their turn with with stuff he can't deal with. He would still absolutely hold his ground. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Yeah. Um, but if you like stacking big power, big hits, soul, you know, Potemkin, May. Yep. Um, if you'd like more of the information game, Hanji might be up your alley. Yep. But yeah. No, yeah, I can see He's that. He's pretty unique. There's no one that really quite... He plays very fundamentals, but he does them so well and so hard that it's really difficult to find anyone who plays just quite like him. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, yeah. yeah, but I, there, clearly there are options for for the various different aspects of his kit, but everything together, nobody's ever made a copy of him, right? Like, why would they? He already exists. Um, right. So, yeah, so you, you, you take what you can from other characters and see if you find something that you like. But yeah, so if you mm -hmm. like any of those characters... Uh, uh, and you have a sworn enemy that you want to play exceed with, play play promo night with them and see how it goes. More um, so, if you're still on the fence, what I would say is, listen, either you can play promo night or the person across from you can play promo night, and one of them is going to be a lot more fun for you. That's that's wow, that's incredibly true. <laughs> yeah, it's a real it's a real suffering chicken or the egg situation. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, so I think I got what I needed in terms of information out of this. Uh, okay. Anything else you want to mention, Taxi? I don't think so. I'm right. looking forward it, to doing more of these with you. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. So in that case, uh, I all I have left to say is to to thank my wonderful guest, uh, Taxi, uh, for being here and to thank my viewers for putting up with us for about 90 minutes. Thank you guys so much. Um, and I will see you all for the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye.